Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are One of Us Adventures. This week we took our picture window inside with some mixed results and we also enjoyed some lovely sunshine. Brilliantly sunny today. We're just going to have a quick check to see what our solar panels are up to. It's only like 10.47 in the morning. Max yield over the past couple of days has been really good. And we're only in spring and the panels are filthy. So anyway, spring has sprung and one of the benefits is we have more solar so i'm just gonna turn the inverter on charge the starter batteries using our own sustainable energy if you're new here and you're wondering what on earth is going on in this video we started this project a few weeks back and the next step is to figure out how to make this look good okay so this bit here we'll cover in birch and i'm going to start by first of all cutting it to the maximum width and the correct height, basically a rectangle. And then what I'm gonna to have to do is figure out how I'm gonna taper this in. I'm gonna face it with this nine mil birch. Now you might notice behind, there's a bunch of new wood. It's because in the next few weeks, we're gonna be building the overhead cabinets, the kitchen, um, and our water and gas cabinet from the bed. This was gonna house an outdoor shower. But anyway, first of all, we need to actually get the bedroom bit finished off. So it's cut to length, and I measured it and cut the width. You probably wondered why I took so long to measure that. Well, I'm being extra careful these days because I did an order of birch plywood. And would you believe that in a space of a week, plywood, prices went up 50% so I was being extra careful anyhow next thing I need to do is make my cutouts for around these brackets ultimately you won't see these because the mattress will be over them but I want to be as neat as possible so what I'm going to do is mark on here where they need to be measure and then I'm going to try and cut out two sort of U sections so it will slot over them so I'm going to make a template for that side and a template for this side and then chop the sides up and I've just had a design change of mind on this I think um what is that on my face know, some sort of crud anyhow I was looking at these I was just going to cover those over these little pockets here really hard to point when you're on camera pockets here and here I don't know if I can leave those like that I'm seeing I'm seeing an opportunity for a little storage place. But we'll see how much of a pain in the bottom that will be. Use some simple cardboard templates to just mark up where I'd need to cut the plywood. On here I've marked it with 1.5 centimetre gap at the top. The reason being is I know that that is going to come above where my shelf currently is to form a lip for the plywood that's going to go there. I found that a fine tooth hacksaw blade worked well for cutting the edges of this and stopped it from splitting the birch plywood. We're down to fettling now to get it going. Taking it in and out of the bus, in and out of the bus. And uh, it takes ages just a trip. Keeps, keeps you less fat though, which is good. I'm just going to use some um, 80 grit sandpaper to just take these corners down a little bit more because literally I, I want it as tight as it can be but obviously I don't want to be causing any undue stresses on any of the wood. I continued this pattern many, 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 many times over. Honestly, when you're building a van, this sort of thing takes absolutely ages. Lots of sanding, lots of trimming, lots and lots and lots of time it's a little bit of in out shake it all about do the hokey cokey and get loads of dust in your beard at the moment but it's worth it for getting a good fit the problem with using one sheet is eventually it looks really good but to get it to look really good it takes ages and any like one false move you could really mess it up um which is never good 
Let's just just gonna go inside the bus now and push this properly into the position it needs to be, and then I'm gonna go and draw around so that he knows where he's gonna cut the hole out. Which is like Yeah, slightly this, yeah, that's fine. I'm using my head. Sometimes you gotta use your head, I guess. Love it. Okay, he's just tidying up. So the next thing is to cut that big rectangle out and then we are going to try and make use of that storage. Making it up as we go along. Okay, done a time jump to Friday. So been out in the mini, back here now, just assessing to how we're going to cut this and really wallowing in the irony of uh, how much I'm going to cut out of this piece of wood. Using the plunge saw, I cut inside the pencil lines, which just left the corner parts to remove with a pull saw. So this is cut out now and I'll route around once that's in its final position just to get it completely flush with the rest of it. Um, but the next thing I need to do is make some noggins for this storage idea. Before I carry on though, if you could just hit the like button, it just helps the video reach more people. I'm measuring this and you are? Taping, getting ready to do some more painting. The sealant we've used up here is overpaintable, but you can see that it dries back like cream, like creamy colour. So we're going over it. So it's all the same colour. I love a little bit of an iron. But that means that we're going to do some more coats on the roof as well. Yeah, make sure it's even. The next thing I need to do is make the frame for both sides of the storage. I'm going to use this nine millimetre ply here to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is to cut two to three long strips that are 63 mil wide um, that I can then cut down. Okay, so I've got the uh, eight components for the frame cut now. I'm just giving them a rub down um, with some light sanding paper. And then I'm going to give them a coat of Osmo oil before I put them in. And once it's all assembled and trimmed, we'll give it a final coat. Osmo oil goes on really well. Basically, I used a brush, covered it in, over, and then wiped it over with a lint-free cloth. So the face of this thing here, this is the back of it. I'm just going to give a couple of coats of this Osmo oil. As I'm brushing it on, a nice light coat, and then I'm ragging it off with a lint-free cloth. I've seen some people just apply it with a cloth, but I'm doing it with this because the first with the first coat, it seems to really drink it up anyway, so you're barely rubbing anything off. But what that does give you is a nice even coat. I found no brush marks on this. It just brings the grain right out. I've just put a little bit of um, Perreflex around. I'm going to slot them in place, they'll be butted up tight to each other and that should be enough then to keep them all square. Right, these badges are in, square. I need to cut the inset shelf at the top here now. I'm using my flange saw to do that. This is cut, oiled, just going to give that a couple of hours to dry. A little tip though, um, try not to get this on your skin because you are, A, you might be allergic to it and B, it's like it'll make you slippery like a dolphin and unless you're like into that sort of a thing um you kind of don't want it because this oil you can't really wash it off your hands all that easily um it is water-based and it does come off but you kind of yeah makes you silky smooth but not in a good way before i get to clamping the front up to be able to attach the front i'm just going to put these spacer blocks in here Show you why in a minute clamped up and in place now i'm just going to go and get my nail gun so i've got a nail gun for my air compressor that shoot brad nails i'm going to use some 22 mil brad nails in here i'm going to put a blob of sick flex on the back of it too just for bound braces
I don't think I was plugged in the air hose. Oh boy! Oh dear. Right, I've come to the realisation that I've uh, horsed that up. I'm just going to get some lost head nails, I think. Bang those in. And then uh, we'll fill those other holes. Thankfully, I've got some wood filler made by Osmo on the way. I think we, you, we won't see those tiny, tiny holes. Next, I routed round the window edge with a flush trim bit. This went really well but then I had to stop to go and pick up the car from the MOT and go to B&Q. You can see that there are some nails there. What I've done is I've banged those in with uh, um, the end of another nail so they sit behind the skin of, of the wood and I'm going to fill those tomorrow. Um, but what I'm going to do now, which might end up ruining it completely, is drill a big hole out and try and cut it out so we've got those storage holes and this could uh this could this could either make or break it really this actually went really well until unfortunately it bloody well didn't it's roughed out however it's happened again Um, I'm going to rough out the other side with the jigsaw, getting as close as I can, just like I have here. You can see that I started to route down this edge and then the bearing just let go um, and then ground in and it was too late before I noticed. Yeah, not ideal that, but th this is amateur van build. Let's see, if it ends up looking absolutely rubbish we will have to start from scratch. It's going to rough out the other side. A small mercy was, I don't think it was entirely my fault. Yeah, I found a screw. And basically what's happened is it's come out of the bit. So a good learning point for you. Always check the tight. I'm going to put it back in now, into the bit, um, with some Loctite, and give it a whirl. These things happen, don't they? They happen. They happen to idiots like me. <laughs> it's been a few minutes. I've had a good laugh about it. These things happen. We will fix this. Concluded that day by trimming around the edges and making it as neat as I could, ready for the repair in the morning. Saturday morning. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to give it all a light sand now, some sort of 240 grit sandpaper, and we're going to crack on with adding a few of the accessories up. Okay, so whilst we wait for the uh, filler to arrive, we're going to think about how we're going to keep stuff on this shelf. I come up with a, a fairly simple solution, which is just like a rail. So I've gone and bought this fitting to go in the middle and some end caps. However, when I have a look at it here, I want it to come out a little bit further. So I'm just gonna make a little base plate out of some plywood. And then that way, what I can try and achieve is to have the bar basically running flush with the front of the shelf. To maximize the space. So I'm just gonna go draw around this base and try and cut it out. It's a little bit bigger than the outer edge of it, but I don't mind it. I'm just gonna pilot hole it through, just give it a coat of oil. Right, so the Osmo is drying. I've cut a dowel for the storage as well. I'm gonna crack on with some electrics and come back to this with some finishing touches at the end. The little reading lights that we've gone for, and we are gonna have other lights in the bedroom, like these little flexible DDs, which are LED. They're dimmable, and most importantly, they've got a USB charger in them. And we've wired the one up in the bunk and the one above this side of the bed in parallel, so they're running off the same circuit. I don't want all of this tail on here, so I'm gonna just chop some of it off. They're equal. The cable I've, I've used in here is um, 33 amp, three millimeter cable. So I've got two things running off here, and I know that both maximum amp draw is two amp. Two add two is four. I'm gonna round that up to five, just for belt and braces. And then what I did is I popped it through a calculator which calculates the complete run. So both negative and positive back to the fuse box at about eight meters. So in here, in the calculator, I could put it in as four meters because it doubles it. That tells me that I need 14 AWG cable, 
which this is a grade slightly higher than that. 14 AWG is American. Over here we deal in millimeter squared. This is three millimeter squared. So I know that the cable is capable of um, delivering the amperage over the distance needed to, to power both the charger and the light. I wired up the other side in much the same fashion and they were secured with some self tappers. I then thought that I was telling you how to size a fuse. Essentially all you do is take the 5 amps, times it by 1.5, you get 7.5 and then you round it up to the next available fuse. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. You can make these basically brighter or darker depending on what you want by holding the button in. We'll test the uh, USBs later. But first, Amazon have just arrived, which means my filler is here. All right, so the main purpose for this is to fill those nail holes from my nail gun um, over. Made by Osmo, it's supposed to be really good. It looks a bit hard, it says put it in hot water. So I'm gonna do that whilst I have some lunch. Um, and we're gonna see if we can repair that other bit as well. So working with the putty knife, four in one. Crack filler. Mix some stuff up in here, which is a few extra drops of water. This is in here heating. So they go over each of the little holes now with a knife. I'm gonna use uh, my big fat Stanley blade, which is a lot like a putty knife, because it's quite big. Um, and then we'll let it dry. It's filling it in. You can see over here, this takes a couple of hours to dry, but you can see here, here, and here, it's dried already. Is it therapeutic? Yeah, I like it. I like icing the cake. Then fitted the black pole hardware and our dowel for our shelf. Okay, we've started to put this up. Done the middle on one end so far. It's been a little bit difficult, this one, to go. We've just installed in the Sirocco 2 fan. I had to modify the bracket slightly for the cable to come out. They didn't really leave much room on the back. It's supposed to come down this neat little trough here. There's no room. And on the back, you've got a um, place for ring terminals, which is also unusual. So I'm just fitting these on here now, and then we'll screw those up and pop it on. Oh, my goodness me. Okay, fans up. Looking at it, so this, these are supposed to be really good, these fans. I use them a lot um, in Australia. So... On full chat, this pulls 0.35 of an amp, which is less than one amp when using the times 1.5 formula. So I'm gonna go have a look at what I've got in terms of um, fuses, but the cable that I've used in here is like 22 amp cable, 21 amp cable, something like that. So uh, 1.5 to three amp fuse is gonna be fine. Actually, on a two amp, so I'll pop that in there. Give it a go. Okay, here it is. In. Get Kelly out here to test it in a minute. For the most part, the filler is now dry. You can see where I filled in the nail holes. Not just about. This will all be um, oiled. What you can see quite a lot of, though, I've had to add more on here. I'm confident when it's done, square, it'll all be fine. I just need to let it dry overnight. Okay, we have now got the lights and the fans in and they are working. This also goes to different speeds and you can also move it around. So if you want it on Lily, the lunch is speaking or whatever. Our bar and our little shelf in for different things as well as these little, we tend to put little cubby holes in for like toiletries teddies or books things like that well, that's about it thank you so much for watching like always and we hope you had a lovely week and we will see you soon one two three bye, bye.